Greetings, church, and welcome to the service of the First Baptist Church in America. As construction continues on the heating system at the meeting house, our worship services will continue online and in sanctuaries created by God's own hands and with some additional soundtrack provided by traffic. Thank you for joining us for this time of song, of prayer, and reflection. On the first Sunday of the month, it's our practice to share in the Lord's Supper together. Please take a moment now if you need to gather the elements that you will need for that portion of our service. We thank you for your ongoing gifts that enable us to continue the work of church. Right now, we are gathering offerings for the one great hour of sharing, offering, these gifts go directly to help people in need around the world in the immediate aftermath of disaster. Already, resources are being deployed to our brothers and sisters in the Congo following the volcanic eruptions and their aftermath there. Please continue to send us your prayer requests so we can best know how to hold you in prayer. During the summer months, we will be having services outdoors on the back garden of the Meeting House lawn at 11 a.m. on the first Sunday. So please join us for that service that will run concurrent with these online services. One of the gifts of online worship is that it allows us to dissolve distance. And this morning, we are blessed to hear from one of our Baptist sisters in Christ, Bishop Rusudan is from the Evangelical Baptist Church of Georgia. Now, I know you're saying, Evangelical Baptist from Georgia, I know what that's all about. But friends, I need you to think Tbilisi, not Atlanta. 
I first had the opportunity to meet Rusudan at the Global Baptist Peace Conference in Italy back in 2009, and then again at the same conference in 2019 in Colombia. One of our members, Susan Lepore, traveled to Georgia with a delegation of Baptist women and met with Rusudan and her colleagues there in the Republic of Georgia. And despite being a minority within a minority, a woman who's working in a predominantly male religious field and a religious minority operating in a society dominated by one faith, Bishop Rusudan uses this position to, to, to fuel her advocacy because she, along with other members of the Evangelical Baptist Church of Georgia, advocate for gender equality, and the equal protection of all of Georgia's minorities. Bishop Rusadon occupies a unique and respected role, challenging the perceptions of women in society. She contributes to causes that reduce gender-based violence and other women's initiatives. Together with her congregation, she has helped to establish interfaith dialogues that promote tolerance and equality and has successfully worked to protect the freedom of religious minorities, particularly Muslims. She was one of the first members of her community to speak out in support of the rights of Georgia's LGBTQ community. In 2014, she received the International Women of Courage Award. And unlike uh, Baptist counterparts in North America and in Europe, the Georgian Baptist community worships and organizes itself differently. It's more of an Episcopal form of church governance with bishops and liturgy that reflect Orthodox traditions. The Baptist elements of their worship are evident in their ministry of laity, freedom of conscience, and a sense of mission in society. Together with Archbishop Malkas, Bishop Rusadon has helped form what is called the Peace Cathedral. And it is a place of worship for the Abrahamic traditions, Jews, Christians, and Muslims under one, under one roof. The Peace Cathedral is a profound example of what the world can be. Their, their main in initiatives that they commit themselves to are reconciliation, amongst ethnic groups, reconciliation amongst religious groups, and reconciliation amongst various social groups. Their aim is to bring peace and justice and reconciliation to the Republic of Georgia. It is a profound privilege to welcome her to our service today. I know we will be blessed by the word she brings. We know that we can and we should pray about anything. And so I invite you into a time of prayer. God of all creation, help us to center our hearts, our thoughts, our yearnings, to let go of past wrongs and uncertain futures. Help us to let the air out and to take a simple breath in, here in the presence of your eternal time. We acknowledge those who have gone before us, and we make way for those who are yet to come. God, keeper of truth and source of comfort, we mourn with families and communities affected by the recent mass shootings. We pray for those who are living with storms and floods, fires and droughts throughout the world. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Congo living in the aftermath of the volcano. You know our sorrows, you know our aches. Thank you for meeting us in our most tender and rent places. 
when the world feels so upside down, we, we remember that we can sit with and pray with and for people of all faith and no faith and uncertain faith in these times. We pray for your mercy. And yet we remember joys in our midst, new children born. Successful surgeries, receiving a word from our physicians that we are in remission. God, our protector, each day we hear of the discourse around masks and distancing and vaccine signups. Help each of us to understand our role in this second year of the pandemic and its variants. Help our nations that can send supplies to those who are still in need around the world. Help us to rest in this moment in your goodness and your mercy, to safeguard with love and compassion the traveler, the immigrant and the stranger. We pray in the name of Christ and in the way of Christ, saying, Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It's time for the annual flip-flop campaign. This summer's project is to raise money to send 15 of our young people to Camp Canonicus. Recently, you may have read the stories from many individuals in our church family who shared memories of how the camp impacted their lives. After a difficult year for so many young people, this camp experience will be especially important this year. In the June Spire, you can see what the camp costs this year and what your money will buy. You can donate any amount you would like. Checks should be made out to FBCIA with flip-flop or camp on the memo line and mailed to the church office, or you can give online with flip-flop or camp in the notes area. Thanks for your help in making camp available for so many young people this year. There are three scripture readings this morning. The first is from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, so he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The second scripture is from 1 John, and it's chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For these are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And, and the three are in agreement. And the third reading is from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have, have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No long, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. Dear brothers and sisters uh, of the ocean, uh, greetings from Tbilisi, from the Evangelical Baptist Church of Georgia, from Peace Cathedral. It's a great honor and pleasure to be part of your um, service, to be part of your, your, your church life. I was very happy to receive the invitation uh, to share with you today's uh, reading from our church calendar. 
The thing is, this year, um, the difference between the Eastern and Western calendars is quite big and uh, we have not celebrated Pentecost yet and we are in the time of uh, um, anticipating uh, Ascension uh, Festival. Today's reading uh, comes uh, from the book of Acts from the New Testament and let me read uh, chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking, uh, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard the speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter says, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them uh, for a few more days. Um, when I talk with my students about the New Testament books, um, I found a very interesting pattern. They always say that um, the Gospel books are very interesting because uh, they, the, the four of them speak about the life of Jesus, uh, the, what, what he, he went through, how he preached, what he teached, and they love the apostolic, uh, Apostles' letters. Um, because there is, uh, there is this wisdom how to live the Christian life and all these uh, advices uh, from Paul and uh, Peter and John and everybody. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, or maybe it's not a surprise at all, they find, find the book of Acts rather boring because it just describes how uh, the disciples started uh, preaching, spreading gospels here and there, uh, how they would start the churches in different uh, uh, towns, etc., etc. Et uh, to be honest, um, um, for me, uh, it has not been um, from the beginning, but now I find the book of Acts one of the most interesting book, one, one of the most interesting texts to read and realize uh, how we as Christians uh, live our life according to the teaching of Jesus. This is a time when, when uh, Jesus is no longer physically with the disciples and, and uh, here we see how um, this prominent man uh, reveal what they had understood from Jesus' teaching, from the messages uh, they had received for three and a half years while being with, with, uh, uh, with Christ. And it's so interesting to observe how step by step uh, they realize what the Jesus' wor words uh, really meant. And uh, very often, being uh, uh, the, the uh, Christian of the 21st first century, we sometimes um, don't look at, at the disciples and sometimes we think, how couldn't they understand that the, the Jesus message of salvation, of God's love was for everybody and how would they struggle and, and discuss the issue if the Gentiles have the same uh, willingness of readiness or readiness to, to, to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the salvation, to receive Jesus' love. Um, I myself was brought up in a Baptist family um, in the 
the Baptist minority, tiny oppressed minority Baptist church in Georgia during Soviet times. So the oppression was uh, uh, from different sides from the government because the Soviet government was the atheist government and, and, uh, and from the culture as well because the Protestant faith was not really natural uh, kind of, uh, of, of tradition uh, for um, orthodox um, culture here. So I remember my understanding of, uh, of the line of the church, of the walls of the church. Um, and I would think that the, the most truth and the, and the best understanding of Christian message is here in my church. And I remember myself when first being in the part of the um, ecumenical relationships, I was just as surprised as the circumcised believers uh, uh, accompanying Peter here in this message when they saw that the love and, uh, and acceptance and empathy and forgiveness and uh, understanding of Jesus was absolutely the same in different Christian traditions. I remember the surprise we had when we started to uh, broaden our understanding of love of God and we started to be involved in interfaith dialogues, interfaith relationships. So first it was, okay, uh, I am Christian, you are Muslim, I am Christian, you are Jew, or you are Buddhist or uh, Hindu or whatever tradition you follow. Um, we, we respect you and please respect me back too. But still, in this understanding, we would have these walls around our understanding of God's love and God's uh, acceptance of the humankind. And at some point, we realized that the walls that had been built around the um, people of God, that Jesus tried to break down and he did drop them down. After some times, Christianity gathered those stones from the broken walls piece by piece, and we started to build our own walls. Throughout the history of Christianity, several times there have been attempts to break down the new walls, but every time we break down the walls, we again start to build new ones. And we kind of narrowing down the understanding of God's love and understanding of God's uh, salvation, God's uh, open arms. I wonder what be, would be the surprise for us in the 21st century Christianity. What, what kind of people uh, would be a surprise for us, just as the, it was a surprise for the first century um, circumcised uh, believers to see that the Gentiles had the same understanding of God's love, same recipients of God's love. So probably we, depends from which culture, which uh, um, historical experience we come from, we would have our own surprising people. Um, and I have experienced so many times seeing God's love, uh, seeing a big heart, in so many groups of people, I was so very much surprised to see, and I would understand how how narrowly 
uh, we pictured Jesus' love and Jesus' uh, salvation in our understanding, in our mind and heart. In, in, in today's reading, we have another uh, scripture passage from the Gospel of John, where he speaks about um, how does Jesus want that the world identify us as Christians, as followers of Jesus. And the only sign he mentions is the love. For each other. So we each have our own um, paradigm how to how to find the people of our our, our own um, spirit and the like-minded uh, uh, people around us and the best thing is when we find that, that we share the same understanding of love when we see that we share the same understanding of humanity and harmonious coexistence on this world, wonderful world. And uh, it can, that, that, that feeling can come from a variety of group of people, surprising group of people. My message for today is, my prayer for today is that we as Christians of the 21st century could understand the, the shades of the walls we have built around us, um, that these walls do exist, exist, and if we want to grow as Christians, first of all, we need to deal with those walls. We need to get rid of those walls. And my prayer is, to, to get connected with as many people as possible because um, we live on the same, same universe, we share the same sky, we share the same land, we share the same pain and we share the same joy. May God bless all of us um, to be able to share the love of God with everybody. God bless you. Amen. Jesus reminded us that something holy happens when we come together to share the meal with one another that he first shared with us. This day, we invite all people who trust in the meaning of the life of Jesus to join us in this meal. If you sincerely seek after Christ's own heart and desire to live a new life of loving and doing God's will, then receive this meal in the spirit. Do this and remember. The church beyond the walls reminds us that this is Christ's table in the midst of the hubbub and traffic of life. Come, you who feel weak and unworthy, you who come often and you who have stayed away. Come, you who love Jesus and you who wish you could. Come sinners and saints, women and men, gay and straight, cisgendered and trans. Come, you who are sober and you who are not. Come, you who are houseless, and you who have a place to rest your head. Come, you who are citizens of this land, and you who are not, because here you are citizens in the realm of God. Now join God's people at this feast prepared for you from the beginning of the world.
Our God, in the midst of our lives, wherever we find ourselves surrounded by serenity or cacophony, we invite you to hear our prayers. We ask that you bless our many tables, that you bless our offerings, that you fill us with your goodness and sweetness as we receive this meal that you first shared with us. Amen. On the night when he was betrayed, after giving thanks, Jesus took the bread, saying, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, do so and remember me. Friends, take and eat this bread of life. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He taught us that this was a new covenant. A new way to relate to God and one another. And he said, as often as you drink this, do so and remember me. Friends, take and drink this cup of heaven. We thank you, God, for your provision, your gifts of fullness, strength, and sweetness. May this meal equip us to live as your people in the world. Amen. Friends, as you go, share this meal by contributing to those who might otherwise go hungry in your community. Please give to a local food bank or pantry like Better Lives Rhode Island here locally or another mission in your midst. This is how we share this meal and the abundant love of Christ in the world. Amen. Church, as this service concludes and your service continues in the world, go in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is good, return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve God, and rejoice in the power of God's own spirit. Amen and go in peace.